and 1x designed by this 1x framework designed by Craig McLanahan in the year 2000s. Craig McLanahan he released, I mean, he given this framework. Once again, his name, Craig McLanahan. Craig McLanahan. In the year 2000, he released it. In the year 2000, he designed it. In the year 2000. And he given that framework to Apache people. He given that one to Apache organization. Apache is a famous implementation partner for Sun. So if Sun release any document for the document apache will provide implementations immediately so apache is the one of the implementation partner for sun it's a third party organization okay this organization they taken that craig mclanahan framework and they named it struts and officially they released in the year 2002 and in the year march march 20 something and it's became more popular it became more popular in market. Still we have demand for Struts 1X. And finally this Struts 2 framework, yeah, Struts 1X, Struts 1X released in the year 2002 and they closed this framework in the year 2010. Struts started in the year 2002 and they closed it. They announced as EOM in the year 2010. Still, why you are here to learn one X? Still, we have demand in market. They announced it as EOL. EOL means they are not going to provide any support, but they are providing. But they are providing jar files and all the API and all the things. It's a free framework, right? From 2002 up to 2010, it's become more popular and it is most successful framework as compared with other MVCs. So it's a successful framework. If you want to use it, you can use. Apache, they are not like, I mean, they are not asking as license. You can download and you can use it. But they are not providing support. They announced it as EOL. EOL means the Struts team. Actually, they hired some team members. The team members, they are providing support. They given support from 2002-2010. That team, they removed from Struts. And that same team, they assigned to Struts 2X framework. Struts 2x actually started in 2007. In 2007, they moved complete Struts team, Struts 1x team, they assigned to Struts 2x. To design Struts 2x, they assigned Struts 1x team. Completely, they announced it as EOL in the year 2010 and they started Struts 2 development. Still, it is, still, we have many releases from Struts 2x. From 2007, they started Struts 2.0 release. Now it is 2.3.16. Many releases. In between 2007 to now date, 2015, there we have up to 100 plus releases we have. 100 plus releases they given. Every month they are releasing one or two releases. They are updating and they are releasing. Still there are some bugs that's why they are updating that starts to framework and the reasons why we should learn starts 1x or 2x here why we should learn first 1x here 1x is the base framework for all the remaining mvcs if you see spring mvc spring mvc is almost similar like starts 1x same architecture, Spring MVC architecture, Struts 1X architecture, almost 90% same. Just they given, they added some handler support. If you see Spring MVC, they, they given some handler support. That is only the advanced feature in Spring. Okay, the remaining all features are same like your Struts 1X only. And the internal architecture also same. It is similar like 1X only. And one more thing why we should learn 1x, if you have any application, old applications, 
if already those are designed in struts 1x if you want to migrate of if you want to move that old applications to spring mvc you have to understand existing architecture right so to move from struts to spring mvc or to move from struts to any other frameworks you require to understand existing flows right that's why also we should learn we should understand 1x and still some projects going on 1x also some major companies like tcs also they started one project by using struts 1x they revised they started by using 1x only not by using 2x from 1x tiles is famous one by using the tiles by using the tiles they are making their presentation they are pre i mean they created their presentation part ui part maintenance will become simple if you go through struts 1x tiles in struts 2x also we have but still they are using struts 1x only and the major differences between struts and spring is struts it can't able to provide struts it can't able to provide restful web services support but coming to spring mvc it have restful web services support that is only the major difference between struts and spring okay spring can provide a rest to support but whereas we don't have that same support in 1x or 2x in 2x they given actually in 2x we have but in 1x we don't have and these all frameworks are what web mvc frameworks right we can provide support for web layer not for model we can provide support for web like presentations and controllers you can design and to design these presentations and controllers they given support right and by using by using jsp model architectures they design this mvc frameworks to design mvc frameworks is there any standards yes we have jsp model architecture standards by using that jsp model architecture standards craig mclanahan he designed craig mclanahan designed this struts 1x by following some rules which rules jsp rules craig mclanahan he designed struts mvc craig mclanahan by following some jsp model rules by following some jsp model rules by following jsp model rules he designed struts jsp model architecture rules jsp model architectures we have four jsp model architectures jsp model 1 model 2 model 3 model 4 we have four jsp model architectures as per that jsp models 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 there are four models jsp model 1 jsp model 2 jsp model 3 and model 4 as per this jsp models first multiple forms request we need to map to one single controller first thing as per this jsp models multiple forms have to map to one controller complete application forms we have to map to one single controller so here in case of jsp model 1 if you have multiple forms that multiple input forms request form 1 form 2 form 3 these three forms request you need to map to only one controller as a controller here you have to use jsp as a controller you have to use jsp here as per jsp model 1 and coming to jsp model 2 multiple input forms you have to map to only one single controller under this controller part you have to use a servlet as per jsp model 3 your multiple forms request you need to map to a 
controller under a controller you have to go through filter and in case of JSP model 4 multiple forms we have to map to a controller and as a controller here we have to go through tags custom tags are either any predefined tags by using the tags we have to design your controller so these are four JSP models by using which JSP model he designed starts starts to 1x designed by using JSP model 2 starts to 1x framework designed by using JSP model 2 in JSP model 1 we don't have any framework this JSP model 1 is not recommended model this model and this model these two are not recommended models still we don't have any framework by using JSP model 2 struts 1x framework Craig McLanahan design means as per struts 1x what you have to do your multiple input forms you have to map to one single servlet class and by using JSP model 3 Apache people they designed one more framework struts 2x struts 2x designed by using JSP model 3 architecture struts 2 designed by using JSP model 3 and spring MVC if you go through JSF JSF also designed by using JSP model 2 architecture and spring MVC also designed by using JSP model 3 architecture and only one framework we have struts 2x in JSP model 3 filter it is a filter either JSPs or servlets or filters or tags we can use for controller part right if you have any data in presentation how to read the data to read data we can use JSP page right we can use filters we can use servlets and we can use tags also right or JSTL tag libraries we have tags we have to use in JSPs right tag support classes you can write but that classes we have to use under again JSP page only right so these both are similar but in case of JSP model 1 you have to write code inside JSP page but in case of JSP model 4 that same code you can write inside tag implementation class but the tag finally we have to configure under JSP only so why these two are not recommended in these two cases we have to use JSP. If I design any framework by using JSP pages, there is a chance to making manipulations. We can edit and we can change it, right? So, Craig McLanahan starts one X framework. We can design it as a, our own framework if we provide by using JSPs. We can make changes. So, that's why he started that MVC design by using JSP model 2 architecture. So, as per JSP model 2, we have to we have to submit multiple views request to only one single controller that controller name is in struts 1x that controller servlet name is action servlet action servlet in JSF that controller name is in JSF it is faces servlet in spring MVC it is dispatcher servlet In struts to x those are filters the name of filter is filter dispatcher and they given one more filter struts prepare and execute filter So as per struts 1x we have to map our input forms request to one single controller the controller name is action servlet we have to map our input forms request to 
actions are late. In case of struts 2x, we have to map it to filter dispatcher or struts prepare and execute filter. You can go through any filter. For JSF, it is faces are late. Faces. And why actually they taken this JSP model architectures? Why actually they are using this JSP model architectures here for designing their frameworks? Framework need to provide some common required features, right? It need to provide some common required features to what? For applications. In applications, if it is a web application framework, to whom it need to provide support? Presentation pages or controller classes. So to provide a presentation pages, and to provide support to controller classes. Actually, he taken this JSP model 2 architecture and he designed one controller. He designed one controller. That single controller will provide support for all the input pages. For all the input pages, all the for all the input pages, the common required validation operations, form data, read operations, internationalization, everything he designed inside one single controller class and he given to us. So, Craig McLanahan, how many classes he designed? One single controller he designed. That controller name is Action Sunlight. This Action Sunlight will provide all the features. Validation support, form backup support, internationalization, exception handling. Many features we have, right? All these features he designed under one Action Sunlight and he given to us. So, if you submit any form request, if you submit any form request, for that form if you require validations, this actions are late, it can handle. So, common operations it may execute. Then, what about user specific operations? Let's say if it is student registration page, and if it is employee registration page, and if it is some logging page. For student registration, student registration operation we have to do. For employee registration, employee registration operation. For logging, logging operations we need to execute. But the common required operations for these three forms, it required validation, it requires validation, it required validations. Here also it requires form backup support, this one also requires a form backup support, this one also requires form backup support. So that common features key given here, common, common required features they designed here and the remaining things, user specific operations you need to write by using user specific controllers. You have to write one student controller and you have to write one student controller you have to write here, one employee controller we have to write here and one login controller also we have to write here. Then why they given these actions are laid? To execute the common things, 